First of all guys, I'll be giving you an announcement after the intro, yes. Once the intro is done, I'll be giving you a big announcement, so stay in tune to listen up for that guys. And also, this is a new what if that I'll be giving you guys. What if Naruto was from a demonic clan with OP abilities guys? Yes, he's not going to be born in Kanoha. Things are going to be a bit different. I'm not going to be changing the background that much, but yeah. The clan that Naruto is from is going to be quite scary. And literally feared by many so stay in tune it's gonna be pretty awesome i'm not sure which one of you guys gave me this recommendation but thanks for that so if you remember telling me to write a story about naruto being from a demonic clan yeah thanks for that guys and also i've been taking down your other ideas so yeah they will be out soon i just need some time but please listen to the announcement after this it's gonna be quite informative so yeah let's not waste any time and jump right into this brand new series let's begin now guys So yeah guys, before this begin, what if Naruto had a quirk, what if Naruto had the karma seal, what if Naruto had 6 eye, immortal Osusuke Naruto, Kekigenkai Naruto or Tamar's son, yes, they are not cancelled. In fact, tomorrow I'll be giving you what if Naruto universe had quirks, yes, for those of you are asking, that will be up tomorrow. But the other ones that I haven't done in a month like Vampire Naruto or Blue Beetle Naruto are Demigod Fire Naruto, I'm not going to be doing those. A lot of them I lost my muse for and I noticed that many of you guys don't really like them so. It's hard to find inspiration to keep them going so I want to give you guys what ifs that make you guys enjoy. Yes guys, so the inspiration for those they're hard to find so I'm not going to be doing those anymore. But trust me, nothing else is cancelled. Yes, tomorrow will be what if Naruto Universe has quirk and everything will be going back to normal so... Nothing to worry about, this is just an announcement to tell you what's going on and everything guys. And I promise if I'm going to cancel anything, I'm going to tell you about it. So yeah, and also new what if we're in making too, so go check out that. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. We begin this new series at the Elemental Nation. The Elemental Nation was a gigantic place. Composed of five great villages. Those villages are... The Hidden Stone, Kumo, Kiri, Kanoha, and the Sand. There was many other villages, but they were smaller in comparison. Their power was absolute. The five great nations, no one, no smaller nations rival with them because they were not strong enough. That was the law of the jungle. Fight the great nations and, well, you basically die. That is how things were set in the elemental nation. However, the world was bigger than just them. Yes, the world was large. At the moment, two minor villages were fighting against one another. The land of hail and the land of trees. The both of them were in a forest area. The land of trees being surrounded by at least a thousand trees, composed in a small village. It's similar to Kanoha in features, however. They were not as high maintenance because they were a minor nation. As for the land of hail, it was in a more open area. However, the both of them are fighting over land. They have been enemies since, well, time has lost many history and many names. So yes, it's been a very long time since they've been enemy. And the fight looked like it would never stop. They've been fighting for a large land that was between them. Their villages were close together. However, between them was a massive space that either one of them could conquer to expand their territory and the other would like the other one to step down for going after it. However, over the years, greed and pride would never allow the leaders to step down after all. They want to be the one in charge, no one else. So with that, they continue to fight. However, 
the land of hail, had decided to make a bold move to get their message across. They hired a clan. Yes, one would think that that didn't mean anything because a clan versus a nation, despite being a smaller one, surely the clan would fail, despite some of the clans out there being rather powerful. However, it was hard to hire a clan nowadays after all. Many of the clans through the ages have sided with nations like the Senjus and the Uchiyas at Canova. However, there was only one clan that has stand by themselves and not get influenced by what is happening through the ninja world. This clan is said to be the most feared and terrifying clan in the entire world. The thing was, their prices were extremely high. Extremely. That was the problem. However, over the ages, countless of people had hired this clan to deal with problems that others could not complete. The clan was said to never fail a mission. It doesn't matter what you ask them to do. The members of these clans were said to be unstoppable. So much so that the five great nations did not mess with them. There was a whole thing there that allowed them to live in peace. The land of hail only got a cheap price because they hired one member. One member who was currently not with the clan. He was on a sabbatical at the moment. Going through the ninja world and they hired his services. While the price was still high, higher than any s rank payment, they still paid it. It has said that many people choose not to involve themselves with this clan because this clan was created by demons and that their members were inhabited by demons. So most minor villages stay away from them. That is why the land of trees had decided not to get involved with them. But land of hails, they did not care. That is why at the moment, three men, they were the police officers slash ninjas of the land of trees. Three of them were panting heavily as they finally got their opponent in their trap. Do it now! The one to the left spoke up. He was an ordinary ninja. His uniform composed of a grey vest that was known for the land of tree members with green stripes running through it to blend in. Black pants. His headband had a flower symbol on it. There were two others. Both men were on the opposite side of the valley. There was a massive canyon. There were several explosives tied to the other side. Both men threw their kunais. It connected with the end of the valley the moment someone landed. Before the person could even move though. The two explosives went off triggering the others. The entire pathway gave out and it fell into the deep valley. Crushing down below. However, they did not stop the launch. More shurikens with explosive bombs on it. Blowing whatever was down there to pieces. The leader of the group stepped forward. We got him. He said with joy and relief in his voice. We actually got him. As he looked down into the canyon. He had to step back because a piece of the wall broke off falling down even more. The whole place was a bit unstable after that explosives. However, there was a grin plastered on all of their faces as they flocked to their leader side. Let's report back in. Once again we of the land of tree have proven that we will not fall. It doesn't matter what the land of hail does. The two men that had not spoken up yet spoke for the first time, the one on the right. But to think that they hired a member from that clan. Do not involve yourself with that. It is not us that will get cursed by demons. Let's go. The leader said as he made his way. However, as he turned he heard thumps. Two thumps hit in the ground. The leader body froze up. It felt like his entire body was on ice. He did not dare to move a single muscle. As he heard a voice behind him. Nice trick. It might have worked on someone else. However, the leader spun around as a person walked by him. The person simply walked by him. Once the person stepped to the side and walked away, the leader's throat burst open. He collapsed on his knees, gurgling, before collapsing face first. The person continued to walk. 
right here swaying in the wind. That dropped down on his shoulders, stopping right there. The person calmly walked as he made his way. However, the land of trees had hired Kumo services to help them in this problem that you're currently having. Yes, because the land of trees knew that the land of hail would try something big. They got intel from some of their reliable sources that they were going to plot an attack. So they hire a group of Kumo ninjas that insists of two Jonins and three Chonins. That should be enough to handle any threat that the land of hail might send their way. At the moment, a girl, she had dark skin and white hair. Her name was Aya. She was a fellow Kumo ninja. Her headband proudly securing her forehead. She was on scouting duty, looking for the threats. She was one of the Chonins. The other members of her group were currently within the village. Her being one of the fastest Chonin amongst them, she would be able to get back fast enough to inform them of the threat. However, Aya wanted to prove herself. She wanted to be promoted to the Jonin rank very soon. So she wanted to prove herself and prove that she could handle any threat that Land of Hail might send. After all, they were not that strong compared to the five great nations. She was cocky and she wanted to get high up in the ranks. Therefore, she would do what it takes. That is when Aya saw someone coming her way. She scoffed. They only sent one member. Her cockiness getting better of her. Aya waited. As she saw him approaching, she jumped out. She landed in front of him. Identify your... She paused. When she noticed right here, Aya stepped back. There was only one group of people in this world that had red hair like that. Aya stepped away. The kuna in her hand shaking. Her whole body shaking in fear. She's never seen one of them in person. He continued to walk as the kuna fell from her hand. Aya fell down to her knees, terrified. She could not move. She was traumatized, afraid. The things that she's heard. She was unable to react or unable to make a single move. He could end her life right now if he wanted to. However, he simply walked past her, not striking her down like he did the others. As he had noticed her headband, he then kept on walking. Aya was gripping at her chest. Her heart had still not calmed down. She can't believe it. That man, that man was a Uzumaki. As the man walked off, he arrived within the village borders. The village was a nice place. Despite the constant war that was going on between them and the land of hail. However, right at the village gates was a Kumo ninja. This man on the other hand was a Jonin. His name was Ai. He had clear skin, dark hair, silver eyes. His body was muscular. He seemed to be in his early 20s. As he was talking to one of the gate guards, a female, he seemed to be flirting with her. However, as she was responding back, he noticed her eyes wander until she saw something and she spoke. Who, who is that? She said. The man turned around when he saw the person. The man's heart almost jumped out of his chest. It, it can't be, he thought to himself. The person then came to a stop in front of the gate. His tone was manly but yet calm. And he was full of manners. Excuse me, he said. Can you please escort me to your leader? I believe his name is Lord Tengen. The man said. Is red here swaying with the wind? The Kumo ninja swallowed thickly. As he started to pulse his chakra. Upon doing that, it didn't take too long for the other Kumo Jonin to arrive. What's going on? Why did you... She paused. As she looked at the man standing there. The red here man. She swallowed. Is, is that? She asks. Already knowing what she wants to know. Yes. It's a Uzumaki, said I. Excuse me. Can you please escort me to Lord Tengen? The Uzumaki asked once again. As he was focusing on the girl at the gate. I spoke up. 
as he tried not to let the fear be shown in his voice. Are you here to kill him? No. I give you my word I am not. I am just here to talk to him. I was happy to hear that after all Uzumakis were said to be truthful. Most did not believe it but it is said that they did not lie. Phil in a world with corruption and lies was hard to believe but it is said that the Uzumaki has never broken their oath before. That is why their clan was so feared and respected. It doesn't matter what the mission was, it doesn't matter what they had to do. They will never break their oath. Do it, I said. The girl looked towards him fearfully. Are, are you serious, she said. Listen to me. If we try to stand in this man's way, he will kill us all. The girl looked up fearfully. Of course she heard the rumors. You had to be an idiot not to hear the rumors and the stories. R right this way, she said. The Uzumaki walked past them as the girl was trembling the entire time. The two Kumo ninjas followed. However, they stayed their distance. Nice village you have here. Th 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 thank you, the girl said, fear in her tone. E excuse me, she said. Gaining the courage to speak directly. Yes, he said to her. Can you please n not kill anyone? Oh, I'm afraid I can't make that promise. Oh, don't worry. The reason is not because I'm going to kill you. It's because I've been attacked while coming here. Some of your more foolish members decided to attack me. They tried to have me blown up. So I had to kill them. But I promise from here on out, I won't be killing anyone. I just wish to talk to your leader. The land of hail sent you, right? That's correct. But if they did, they would have sent you to kill Lord Tengen. Well, that's where you're wrong. They don't want him dead. They just want me to talk to him. As they walk through the streets, the people start to whisper and talk among themselves. Fear in their eyes, they could not believe it. That was really a Uzumaki. Most people did not really see them, some even believing that they were myths, even though they heard the stories. But in this world, anything could be fabricated, so it was hard to believe some of the things that they heard. Meanwhile, at the main office, Tengen was a man with long dark hair and green eyes as he sat in his office. He was panicking. He couldn't believe it. That bastard, Komodo, that was the name of the man that laid. The land of hails, that he would go this far to hire a Uzumaki of all people. However, that means this feud between them, the land has no loss. He could not fight the Uzumaki. His village could not handle a Uzumaki. It is said that one of them is equivalent of a hundred S rank ninjas. Well, that might be an exaggeration, but still, there was a reason why they exaggerate like that. They were monsters. Pure monsters that would do whatever it takes to get the mission done. It didn't matter who they had to kill. He was sure by now that the Kumo ninjas had decided not to intervene. As Tengen sat waiting for the Uzumaki to arrive. He thought about it. Years ago. Many years ago. He didn't have much detail or information. There was only few that know everything but. He heard there was a war between the Uzumakis and the five great nations and that the five great nations lost it was scary to know that the Uzumakis were a clan not a village they were a clan that meant that they did not have a lot of members he didn't know if it was true or not however to this day a peace treaty was signed that forbade any Uzumakis from attacking any members of the five great nations without cause a Uzumaki could not be hired to attack a great nation by any other great nation. And none of the five great nation ninjas were allowed to attack a Uzumaki. Or they suffer the wrath of what will fall on them. And for many years that tradition has been kept. The land of the Uzumakis was a place beyond this one. A place that is so vast and encompassing. They say that the island itself is filled with devils. No one knew what the Uzumaki home looked like. The island could be seen from ships, however. 
They say that you can't get too close to the island because there were monsters in the sea that devour any ships that got too close. The Uzumakis were a mystery to this day and feared by all. And to know that the Uzumaki was coming here, he has never seen one in person before. However, there were certain characteristics. For one thing, their shade of red was completely bright. It was so bright it was almost a dead giveaway to anyone that they were coming. And also, they usually have a marking on their face, some kind of black tattoo. People say that it was a mark of the devil. However, he did not know if that was true or not. But one thing he did know though, those that had tried to stop the Uzumakis are tossed with them in the past always end up slaughtered. Hundreds, thousands, maybe millions from the past till now. So he will not be stopping and allow his village to fall. Not today. There was a knock on the door. Enter, Tengen said. As a woman entered, she was sweating. S Sir, she said. I know. You may leave. The woman seemed to be happy to hear that as she left instantly. Despite how loyal she was to her leader, she was just too afraid to stand around this person. The man then entered. And Tengen realized that he was younger than he expected. He looked old but Tengen could see it in his face. He was no older than 15 years old or perhaps 16. His eyes were a shade of blue that seemed bright like the sky itself. Red hair that stopped at his shoulders. As Tengen saw the mark, there was a strange spiral circle right on his forehead with a tiny X in the center. There was no doubt about it. This man was a Uzumaki. Tengen swallowed thickly. Lord Tengen, I presume. I yes, th that's correct. They sent you, didn't they? The land of that. That leader of theirs. Yes. I was sent here on his behalf. He believes that the war between you two should come to an end. That is why. Hold notice hand there was a poof. Oh, excuse me. Where are my manners? My name is Naruto Uzumaki. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, under different circumstances I would say, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Tengen had no idea what he was wearing because he was wearing a brown coat that covered his weapons or clothing. Just a brown coat that was all Tengen could see. As a file appeared in his hand, it seemed to be some kind of listing paper. As Naruto placed on the deck and handed it to him by sliding it over. This is what he's offering for you to back off, for him to take control of the land, and to finally end this war between you and him. He has lost enough and he believes that you has lost enough, however, he will not give up this land. So he expect me to give it up then, Tengen said, raising his tone in anger. As he looked at Naruto, I, I apologize, he said, my anger is not with you. Oh, there's no need to apologize, I already know that. I would be quite upset as well, if this was happening to me. Tengen then got an idea. He knew that this was a bad, bad one, but he wanted that land. Because the one that got it would get the more profit in their earnings. And that was what it mostly was about, right? The money. Well then, why don't you work for me? I'll pay you more. Your prices, Uzumaki's prices are always high, but I'll give you more money. I promise. Come over to my side and no. That was all that Naruto said. Just a simple no. Tengen wanted to argue, but he couldn't find it. He couldn't find the words to do so. He sent you here to talk to me. So if I don't sign this, I suppose you will come and pay me another visit. Yes. If you don't sign it, I will arrive tomorrow in the evening and I will kill you and half of your people and the other half will be subjugated by the land of hail. Tengen wanted to be angry, well he was. He said it like it was that simple. But Tengen knew deep down that there was nothing that he could do if a Uzumaki chose to turn his wrath upon them. It doesn't matter if they were young or not, they were always monsters capable of things that Regular shinobis would never be able to do. And this one. He was not that young. It is said when a Uzumaki is in their teens. 
They are one of the most fearsomest ninjas to ever walk this earth. And despite the amount of man that he had, he believed that he will go through on that threat. Tengen took the paper as he signed it. He had to do what is best for his people. He had to. Time skip. At Land of Hales, Komodo leader handed Naruto a briefcase. As Naruto took the briefcase and he poofed away, Komodo looked at him. Aren't you gonna count it? He asked. Why? Have you not paid me properly? Naruto asked him. Uh, of course, it's just most people check what they get. So I thought that you would. There is no need for that. I'm trusting that you would do the right thing. After all, it would be unwise for you to try and cheat me, said Naruto. Yes, Komodo said. Well then, it was a pleasure doing business with you. Well, you were right. It was cheaper to hire you than going to the main source for the help from Uzumaki. Well, I do aim to please, said Naruto. As he started to walk away. Wait. Yes. Um. Um. You're afraid because you heard rumors. That if you hire us, your curse, is that correct? I yes, said Komodo. As he was afraid. Despite him wanting to get this all done, he was still afraid about that. As Naruto turned and stepped towards his decks. Don't worry, he said. As he looked the man directly in the eyes. We only harm people that cheat us. So as long as you don't do that, you won't face our wrath. With that, Naruto's body burst into black smoke and vanished, leaving the man there panicking about that. But he didn't do anything wrong and yet he was panicking. A distance away, on a nearby little hill, black smoke gathered before. It formed into none other than Naruto. A grin on his face, as his shoulders seemed to relax. As he started to chuckle, he chuckled out loud as he found it rather hilarious. The rumors are really getting out of hand. <laughs> Despite most of them being true, some of them are just rather ridiculous. Naruto wasn't a stuck up person. In fact, he was a pretty laid back guy. Well, mostly, he was a pretty laid back guy. After all, he was not with the Uzumakis at the moment. Yes, he was at Uzumaki. In fact, he was a part of the main family. To be quite exact, his father was the clan head. The most powerful man that he ever knew and that was his father. Was currently the leader of the Uzumaki clan. His mother being the matriarch of the clan. However, he had ran away. Yes, he ran away some time ago. He wanted to explore the world so he had ran away. However, with his last name and his visual appearance, there come certain, well, things that follow. Such as people seeing you and running away. Some of them believing that all the myths were fake and decided to attack you. And then you had to end up slaughtering them. He didn't mind killing after all he grew up in an environment that was horrible. That is not to say that he grew up in a bad life but. Growing up his life was different from most kids. After all. His training was something that is. Beyond brutal. A memory flashed into his head. A six-year-old Naruto was currently standing in the center of ten people. All of them had iron poles in their hands. They brought it back before they started to strike him one after another. They broke his bones. They slapped him over and over until he was a broken mess on the ground. The memory quickly faded away. That might seem like they were trying to kill him but they were not. That was indeed a part of his training. There's a reason why the Uzumakis are so strong. Their training was not natural. And also, there were certain quirks that come with being a Uzumaki. And he was no exception. In fact, he was blessed. Yes, he was as he took off his coat. He was 15 years old. He will soon be 16. As Naruto was wearing a red vest that hugged tightly onto him. He was wearing a black shirt underneath. Long sleeves. He was wearing black pants and sandals that came up towards the ankle. They wrapped around his feet calmly. Something was tied around his waist. It was a sash of sorts. With the Uzumaki symbol crest on it. There were two swords on his back. 
The coat that he was wearing was no normal coat, in fact. Now that he took it off, the swords were jutting up in the air. And yet they were not being shown under the coat. Another reason why the Uzumakis were so feared, Fuinjutsu. However, Fuinjutsu was not their most deadliest art. The two swords on his back and yet, there was a lower one that went sideways that was strapped on his lower back. This sword seemed to be special. The handle had a skull on it. Its eyes seemed to be glowing red. And there was a dark aura coming from it. Just being near it you could feel it. The other swords seemed special but they had nothing on the sword on his lower back. As Naruto went through three one-handed seals, before he held his hand out, summoning Jutsu, Kanjis appear in mid-ear before poof, as a panda appeared. Said panda, reached right up to Naruto's knee. It was pretty small. Its fur, white and black, it seemed to be an ordinary panda. However, what's up boss, it said. It could speak. As Naruto crouched down in front of it, before poof, the suitcase appeared. The panda took it and opened it. As he proceeded to whistle, nice one, he said. One of many. However, I want you to get that one back and give it to, you know who, said Naruto. Her, the panda said. Yeah. Okay, the panda said. Hey, what about my mother? Has she said anything? Oh, your mother. Well, she's quite upset that you ran away. Without even informing them. I had to. She wouldn't have want me to leave. Without the proper protocol. And I don't want that, said Naruto. Well, I know you, boss. And I know that you want to do your own thing. However, she was quite upset. She was saying that she might stab you when she saw you again. As Naruto laughed at that. Despite the panda telling him that his mother was going to stab him. However, if you know the true backgrounds of the Uzumaki, you'd understand why it was so funny. Yeah, she would be like that. Well, I'll talk to you later. Give that to you know who. Alright boss, I'm on it. With that the panda poofed away with the cash. Despite it being a large amount of money, Naruto was not really in need of money. In fact, he was wealthy, like extremely so. However, he was exploring the world. The reason why he didn't allow his mother and the others to find out that he was leaving was because they were going to send servants with him. It's not that they knew he couldn't take care of himself, it's just his mother is controlling. Yes, she liked when things is under her control. Therefore, she liked daily reports on him and knowing exactly what he's doing. And when you disobey, she tend to get violent and also stabby as well. His father was different. His father was more subdued and cool. Despite him being one of the most deadliest men to ever walk this planet. Well, it doesn't really matter to Naruto. If he had to fight her, then fine. He was going to fight her. Maybe stab her back as well. That would surely piss her off and also make her happy. Yes, his family was truly weird. With that, Naruto started to make his way. His destination, the hidden leaf, Kanoha. Time skip. Minato Namikaze sat at his desk. As he was doing some paperwork, Minato Namikaze was the leader of the hidden leaf village. The Fort Akagi, the yellow flash. Minato was going through some paperwork right now. As he thought about his daughter. She was currently on a mission. Some time ago, they used to send children out into wars, however. That all changed. No children had to graduate from the academy. At 15 years old, some of the exceptional ones graduated at 13 or even 14 years old. Itachi Uchiha was an exceptional one. He had graduated at 13. Kakashi Hatake as well. However, not too long ago, Itachi Uchiha had massacred his clan. Minato had been one of the ones that had tried to stop it but Fukaku had gotten mixed up with the elders who wanted to gain the power off the Uchiha's back. Therefore, they wanted to rebel. Minato wanted to stop this but things got out of his control. 
he was sure that Gonzo was the one that convinced Itachi to do this. He has not had contact with Itachi since, as he was against it. His wife was also against this as well, as she could not believe that Itachi had been the one to do this. His wife was none other than Mikato Uchiha. Yes, Minato got married to Mikato Uchiha. He had fell in love with the Uchiha. The both of them were on the same team together. At first it was hard because of her clan status for the both of them to get involved. However, he had proved himself more than enough time and when his rank started to skyrocket, the Uchiha started to allow him more access into their part of the village. And also, Mikato's mother and father, father mostly, stopped restricting him from being with her. So he was able to marry her and have a wonderful daughter. His daughter's name was Natsumai Uchiha, a wonderful baby girl that he had made sure that was ready for what is out there. He had trained her himself as well, as he had handed her off to his students. The one remaining one, Kakashi Hatake. He was training her and also her cousin, Sasuke Uchiha. There was only four Uchiha's that were still alive. That was Itachi, Mikato, Sasuke and Natsumai as well. The others were all dead. Mikato's sister, her name was Saya Uchiha. She was the mother of Itachi and also Sasuke as well. She had been depressed when she had lost her sister to the hands of her nephew of all people. As she couldn't believe it. Itachi had been the one to do that. Of course she knew about what was going on. She saw the way things were going. She saw the hate that the Uchiha's were getting. However, Minato had no evidence on Danzo. And he could not just outright sentence a man to death. And if the news were to come out that the Hokage was involved with something that led to the death of an entire clan, the other clans in Konoha would revoke against this. So Minato would decide to keep the peace. His wife was begrudgingly agreeing, only for the safety of her daughter and Sasuke as well, who they had adopted when it happened. They had taken him into their home like their own son. Given the fact that they were already family, they bonded well together. There was another thing though, his daughter was not just an Uchiha, she was also the holder of the Ninetail Fox, yes, the Ninetails. The name Namikaze was no normal name. It is said that the Namikazes were a very powerful clan that were cousins of the Senjus, therefore, the Namikazes have extreme amount of chakra and a strong body as well. Minato being one of the proud example of that able to use a Hiroshin in such a large quantity. So his daughter was the only one that could hold the beast back. Majority of the Namikaze members had died out. Minato lost his mother and father when he was young. However, he wasn't alone. He had a sister growing up. Their mother was a daughter of Hoshirama Senju and Mito. Namikaze, yes, Mito Namikaze and Hoshirama Senju, to join the Senju and the Namikaze clan together. They went into a political marriage, however they had feelings for each other. They had three beautiful kids. Minato mother was their daughter, therefore, Minato was related to the first and his grandmother was Mito as well. So yes, he was part Senju. The reason why he had taken his mother's name was to be hidden. After all, back then many people wanted the Senju's dead. And that is the reason why his mother died as well. There was a bloodless out to kill all descendants of Hoshirama. To make sure the wood release was never recreated. However, Minato take more after his uncle. The second Okage. That is the way he inherits the Flying Thunder God Jutsu and he was able to advance it to something extremely powerful, passing what Toborama Senju could ever do and making it his own. His grandmother lived for a long time 
Pushurama had died before her. When she was on her deathbed, she passed the beast down towards his sister. Her chakra was stronger than his, so she would be able to handle the beast even more. She had a full nine tail seal inside of her. However, ten years ago, when his daughter was five years old, she was going to give birth. Minato had to be there to make sure that the seal did not fail. Her husband was a Inuzaka, a nice man. However, something chaotic happened. A strange masked man appeared and was able to get his hands on her and take her away. That is what led to Natsumai becoming the nine tail holder. The one that sacrificed his life was none other than Hiruzen Saratobi, who gave everything, sealing the beast inside of the young girl. Natsumai was five years old at the time. As she was able to handle it, there was no other way. Minato was too old. And the sad thing was, his sister, Aria Namikaze, she died along with her husband and the baby as well. He lost his sister, her child, and her husband that night. Yes, 10 years ago it was a rather dreadful day. It was horrible. They lost a lot. However, his daughter had taken up the responsibility. It was the only way for them to save the village. And she had taken it with stride. She wanted to take over his position one day. Therefore, she wanted to show that she was a valuable asset to this village. She was going to make a name for herself. Because of the relationship his daughter was. Praised by many within the village. Her mother had made sure that she was not spoiled in the slightest. She was a thankful, grateful girl that worked hard and she was responsible. She was a spitting image of her mother, however, she had her father blonde hair. And she also had the Sharingan because of an incident not too long ago with Mitsuki that involved Sasuke awakening the eye as well. Sasuke really loved and cared for his remaining family as he would do anything for them. They were the only family that he got left. However, right now they were on a mission. This was their first time out of the village and he couldn't help but worry. And being the Hokage, if anything happened, it's not like he could just left his post and went out there. He had faith in his members of the village, of course, to send out there if anything went wrong, but still, he was worried about her. But he knew that she would do great. They were going towards the land of wave. That is when an Anvu arrived, knocking him out of his trance. Sir, there's a Uzumaki in the village. Minato blink. Is it Naruto? He asks. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, one Naruto special, Ayam said, a big happy smile on her face as she placed down the gigantic bowl. Ayam, the daughter of Tuki, looked on the smile. Amazing as usual. Like yourself, said Naruto. Ayam blushed as she turned her gaze away. Just eat up, silly, she said to him. Naruto has been coming here for some time now. He dubbed this place the best ramen place in the entire world. Uzumaki's have free reign to enter any other village as long as they had their passport and ID. And as long as they did not cause any harm. They had proven to not cause any harm for the past couple of years. So there was no problem to not allow them to enter the villages. Most people feared him. However, most saw him with awe. Ayam had became his friend. He did not come here much, but when he does, they had to shut the place down afterwards because he eat everything they had. One thing about the Uzumaki as well, their appetite was unending. Her father was around the back as he was cooking everything up as fast as he could. How he wished he could do those clone things that the ninjas could do as he cook and cook. Today was going to be a big payoff day because this kid eat a hell a lot. I am watch as he swallowed down the noodles. The thing was, people saw him as some sort of demon. They say that his clan is mixed up with the devil. However, a few months ago, I am was two years older than him but yet, even she fell for his charms. They weren't really dating or anything. However, whenever he came by, they always end up getting into a romantic sense. It happened a few months ago when he first came by after a long time. And they had to close down the place. 
after he finished here, she went on a little walk with him, just to talk to him. And, well, his charms got the better of her, and they end up sleeping together. She knew that they weren't in a relationship besides, he did not stay one place for too long. However, he was nice, but most people feared him, but she knew that some of the things were true. But he was just doing what he had to do as any other ninja. However, the way Usumaki's did things made people so fearful. As Naruto sat there for a good two hours. Well, that's all of it. Tuki said. Come on, old man. I thought you would have had more than this. Sorry, Naruto, my boy, but you've cleaned us out. I'm not even full yet. I am looked towards him. You never seem to amaze me with how much you can eat. As Naruto reached, and poof, he placed something down on the table. As Toki looked towards all the cash. And here you go. A nice tip for the both of you, said Naruto. You're being too generous, Toki said, as he looked at the amount of money. Trust me, it was worth it, said Naruto as he got up and stretched. Well, that was a good meal. He had to say. However, three Anvus arrive. Naruto Uzumaki. As Naruto turned towards them, yes, can I help you? The Hokage wishes to speak with you. Is that so? Meanwhile, the office. Minato had just got some troubling news from Pakon. Kakashi dog summon. It turns out that Gato was at Land of Wave. Gato has been on the hit list of the Fire Nation for some time now. The Daimyo wanted him dead as he was trying to smuggle things through the nation and put people on the, well, trafficking list. There has been several of his associates that were executed. He knew that he should never mess the land of fire and yet he tried to expand his business here and now he was so close at land of wave. The Daimyo wanted him dead and Minato also wanted him gone as well. However, Gato had many people, therefore, they want to do it in private. It wasn't that they fear Gato accomplices, it's just they rather not start something that would end up with massacring and that being massacring Gato's people. They want to keep Konoha with a clean image, so they want to do it in secret. And what better way to do so than not be involved at all and also send a little bit of backup. Minato thought to himself, as this will be perfect, it seems like Kami had sent them Naruto today. Or maybe not Kami, Minato thought. Naruto stepped into the office as he looked towards a man. He was also feared by many people as well. Minato Namikaze. It's a pleasure to see you again, Hokage Dano. How may I help you? said Naruto. Minato sealed up the room, as Naruto did not look afraid. Despite stepping into a room with Akagi, that had the ability to move instantaneously and attack his opponents, even after he sealed the room. As Naruto stood there calmly, I need your help, said Minato. With what? It has come to my attention that Gato is trying to take over the land of wave. Yes, I know of this. You do. So this will make it more simple. I want you to kill Gato and his entire company that is there at land of wave. However, Kanoha name must not come up in this. I see, said Naruto. And there's something else. There's a team there. That is being attacked by one of Gato's associates. I want you to protect them. Naruto reached into his robe. As he pulled out something. A pen and a paper as he wrote down a number and slid it to Minato. That is what I require for this mission. Looking at the amount it was high. However, it was nothing that Minato could not pay. Naruto did not ask any questions. As Minato wrote something and gave it to him. Hand that to Kakashi when you see him. So he can know that I sent you. Other than the team that is there, no one else is to know about this. Understood? Yes. Understood. Good. I will take my leave now, said Naruto as he simply left. As Minato deactivated the seal. He himself did not know much about the Uzumaki clan. And their entire origin but he did know one thing they were not someone to be trialed with the five nations had signed a law a long time ago 
The first Okage was the man that signed the law, with the Uzumakis to not go to war with any of them. It was said there was a war between the five nations and the Uzumakis, and the five nations lost. Minato was not so sure in the detail, because there were so much rumors it was hard to know which one was real. However, he knew that the power of the Uzumakis were immense, so it was best if they did not antagonize them. But so far there has been peace, so there's nothing to worry about. Moments later, Naruto could be seen sitting on top of a massive bird. The bird had red feathers. Its belly was orange. It had a pointed beak. It looked like an ordinary bird, yet at the speed that it was going, it didn't seem possible for, well, its size. As Naruto sat on its back, his legs crossed. He did not hold on or anything, as they flew over the ocean. Once they flew over said ocean, they arrived towards the location as Naruto patted the bird on the back. He then jumped down and landed on his feet calmly. Thank you, said Naruto. It was my pleasure, Naruto-sama, the bird said. I'll be taking my leave now. With that, it poofed away. As Naruto started to walk, making his way as he noticed a mist was rather thick in this area. He calmly walked though, as if he didn't have a care in the world, despite walking into enemy territory where Gato and his men were. Meanwhile, sitting in a meditative pose was none other than Natsumai. Natsumai Uchiha. She had blonde hair that reached into her back. She had three whisker marks on both of her cheeks. She had blue eye. She was dressed in a long sleeve black shirt with a grey jacket over it. The jacket was short, stopping right at her stomach. She was wearing a grey skirt with black shorts underneath with high thigh boots. She was 15 years old, daughter of Minato and Mikato. Her cousin was Sasuke Uchiha. The client had lied about the mission, however. She could not in good conscience allow what to happen here keep on going on. She had to do something about it. So she, Sasuke and their other teammate Sakura Haruno had agreed, their sensei agreed afterwards, to help out Tazuna. Until they ran into someone very dangerous. The academy did not teach him very much in terms of fighting wise but her father and her mother did help her. She had a one toed him Sharingan. She had just recently acquired it, where Mizuki, one of the academy teachers, tried to kidnap her. Her father was a target for many people. So him kidnapping her, he could sell her or do many other things. Mizuki had hide his intent so well. She had trusted him. When he had placed a rag over her mouth, she had passed out. Luckily though Sasuke was looking for her and had arrived on the scene and chased him down. They fought Mizuki in the forest. She was weak. She had just waked up and she was tired. Mizuki tried to kill her but Sasuke jumped in the way. He had jumped in the way taking the blow. The trigger of that had activated Sharingan. But he already activated when he first saw Itachi Masker's clan. But now it was reawakened. She on the other hand, she activated hers because she thought that Sasuke was dead. However, the weapon had only pierced through his shoulder. But given her position, she thought that it was through his heart. They had beaten the crap out of Mizuki after that. They were stronger than your ordinary Jenin after all. However, coming here they faced Demon Brothers. They defeated him. And then they had to face Sabuza. Kakashi knew that they were strong but they were not ready for that. They will be, but not now. And the silent killing technique made it worse. Kakashi got captured though. So they were forced to take him on and free their sensei. And now they were here, Kakashi was injured after his last fight. Exhausted mostly because of the overuse of his Sharingan. She on the other hand, she was trying to get her control. Better. She was the Ninetales holder. Her coils had been stretched. The amount of chakra that she had was ridiculous. It was hard to get under control so it was hard for her to do certain jutsus. But she was getting there. She just needed more practice. She needed to get better. That is what she was striving for. That is why she was now trying to focus her chakra over her body. Her sensei was upstairs resting. Sasuke was outside working out. She didn't know where Sakura was. The girl did not take being a Kunoichi that serious. Yes she did train and she did put in some work but she did not. Take it that extreme. 
However, soon she would realize what the world truly was like. However, Natsuma had to focus now as she cleared her mind. As she calmed herself, clearing her thoughts, that is when she heard it. There was a knock on the door. She slowly opened her eye. Someone came from the kitchen It was none other than Tsunami. You expecting someone, Natsuma asked. No, Tsunami said, looking a bit fearful towards the door. Stay here. Natsuma pulled out a kunai and she stepped towards the door. She cracked it open slightly. As her face did not go towards the crack, she spoke. Who is it? I was sent here from Kanuha. Can you please let me in? Kanuha? Natsuma slowly pushed her head towards the crack as she noticed red right here. Was she mistaken or was she seeing this for real? Natsuma opened the door slightly before she saw it. She slammed the door shut. A look of panic washed over her. What's wrong? Sname asked. Where's your son? Natsumai said. He's out back. Why? Go now. Take the back door and run as fast as possible. Get away from here now. I'll hold him off as best as I can. Natsumai was panicking. There's no way that he was from Kanoha. He was at Uzumaki. They were the only ones that had markings and red hair like that. If Gato had hired a Uzumaki, they were screwed. Her father told her tales. Her mother as well. She even heard things in the academy. Things that were not that bad, but... Ninjas, like Kakashi as well, spoke about them. And she knew that they were a terrifying force of nature. A clan that is said to be created by demons. She couldn't believe it. She quickly brought her hand up together as a clone. Poof into reality. She had to warn Sensei. Would you calm down? She froze. As she turned, Kuna in hand, jumping in front of Tsunami. How how did you get in? It wasn't that hard. As he reached into his coat, she gripped the Kunai tighter. Calm down. As he pulled out the letter. That is when she saw the Hokage seal on it. Wait, is that? As she looked at it strangely. Yes, the Hokage gave me this. As I said, I was sent here by Kanoha. Kakashi came down the stairs as he was using crutches. He seemed panicking and exhausted as well, his one eye showing so much emotion. As Kakashi saw the Uzumaki, he could not believe it. A Uzumaki here. Sensei, look, that is when you saw the paper and the seal. Is that? Yes. The Hokage sent me here. So would you all calm down? I'm not here to cause any problems. I promise. He turned his gaze towards Nami as he looked her up and down. As he was just staring at her. W what she said. Oh, I apologize for staring. It's just that you're immaculate. As she couldn't believe what he said. It actually caused her to blush a bit. He was incredibly handsome. Despite being young, but still, he wasn't that young, but what was she thinking? Sorry for being so rude. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. It's a pleasure to meet you. So, Tsunami, she said. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. She couldn't help but repeat his words. There was just something about his eyes. How they focused directly on hers. Kakashi cleared his throat. Seems like we'll have to get back to this later. Hataki, I presume. I've heard about you. And you're Naruto. You've been in the village before. He has said not to mine. Yes. But he's never stayed for too long. As Kakashi took the letter and read it over. As he breathed a sigh of relief. There's nothing to worry about. He's here on our side. He really is? Yes. Your father was the one that sent him. Thank God, said Natsumai. With all the things that we heard about Usumaki's, I thought that God would hired him. Where well, there's no need to worry. I was sent here by your Hokage. As Naruto turned his gaze back to Tsunami, as he smiled. Seems like this mission is going to be a bit more entertaining than he thought. As there was a grin on his face. 
Meanwhile that was going on, a distance away from Land of Wave, a man was looking over a paper in his hand. It burst into flames. There was something beside the man. Whatever it was, it was shrouded in darkness. It seemed to be some kind of animal, but it wasn't normal. What is it, master? The animal said. It seems I've got a job. At the land of wave. The man said looking over the note in his hand. As he looked up, causing his red hair to blow in the wind. But guys, be in some right here. If you want to see the next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell if you just stay posted. Remember, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs coming your way over the other channels. I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. But I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace.